This is the t-shirt that I was wearing in the last video, but today I want to show you what it says on the other side, on the back. It's an expression from the late scientist Carl Sagan, which says, Somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. For example, hopefully a discovery for the cure of the COVID-19 virus. But today, I want to talk to you about an interesting math problem, which goes like this. Find the positive number such that the sum of that number and the reciprocal of the square of that number is a minimum. First of all, what do they mean by a minimum? Well, let's look at a very simple graph. This is the minimum point. The slope goes from negative to positive. So at this point, the slope must be zero because if I draw a tangent to the graph at that point, the slope of that line is zero. But before we do that, I find this very curious that they say it's a positive number because this is always positive. So for this quantity to be a minimum, don't you think that should be a negative value? If that's negative, it'll lower the value of the whole expression. So keep that in the back of your minds as we calculate this. Let's call this y. And now I need to calculate the slope of this curve using calculus. If you don't know the details, that's fine. Just take my word for it. The slope, which we call the derivative, and write y prime of this function is 1 minus 2 over x cubed. We want that to be 0 so we can find the minimum point, which is what the question is asking us to do. You can tell just by looking at this that x cubed must equal what number? That's right, 2, because 1 minus 1 gives you 0. This must be 1, so x cubed must be 2. Therefore, x is the cubed root of 2, which we can calculate in a moment. In fact, let's look at this function on a graphing calculator. You can see I've typed in x plus 1 over x squared, and if I graph that, I get this curve right there. And lo and behold, there is a minimum when x is positive. I was saying earlier that I expect x to be negative, and sure enough, if x is negative, the graph does go down to negative infinity, but that's not a real value. So sure enough, there's the minimum point where x is a positive number. Now we can calculate that value by using some keys on the calculator. I'll scroll down to minimum, and then if I move the cursor just a, bit, a little bit to the left of the minimum, and then move it a little bit to the right of the minimum, the calculator will calculate the minimum value. And they give us x equals about 1.26 and y equals about 1.89. Now notice that this equation here is virtually the same as y equals x when x is not close to 0. Because when x is close to 0, 1 over x squared becomes inf infinite. So if I graph y equals x, it should be very close to that graph. Just one second, I didn't quite highlight that. There we go. That term 1 over x squared disappears when x gets really big or really small in the negative sense. So isn't that an interesting question? See you next time.